Welcome to The Truth in This Art Beyond, and we're in Philadelphia. We're your source for candid conversations about arts and culture. I am your host, Rob Lee. And today, I am thrilled to be in conversation with my next guest, the founder and creative director of Yaoi, a lifestyle shop and design studio dubbed the coolest shop in Philadelphia. And they're a trusted voice in all things design in Philadelphia and beyond. Please welcome Shannon Maldonado. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for that intro. Oh, yeah. It's very, very, very intro-ish. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I um, I was referred over and it's like, you know, you got to talk to Shannon, right? And I was like, do I? And let, let, me, let me look up Shannon. And I was like, there's so many things to talk about now. And <laughs> like, I don't know if you watch like any of those like movies that are um, like, there's a detective and he's trying to piece together the puzzle. Of course, yeah, yeah. I feel like that creatively and design oriented when looking up. Oh your wow, <laughs> that's amazing. So, so as we get started, before we like really get dipped into the main topic of today's conversation, um, could you please give yourself like you know present to the listener that 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 introduction you'd have for yourself? Like, give give it give it to us. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, my name is Shannon Maldonado. I'm the founder and creative director of Yaoi. Uh, we launched in 2016. We are a lifestyle shop, design studio, and soon to be boutique hotel um, opening this summer. So yeah, that's my my quick elevator pitch of who I am. <laughs> I mean, you, you could have did like the freight elevators a little wider, a little longer. You could, <laughs> <laughs> um, th thank you. And I, I didn't know about the, the hotel done. Oh, yeah. So many things. Um, so in, in, in diving back a little bit, I'm always interested in the the origin story. Like, mm -hmm. what are some of those early things a person was in that maybe has some impact on what they're doing now or what they're driving mm -hmm. toward? So were, were there some like, you know, anything within your background, any early experiences that kind of help shape who you are today? Definitely. Um, I've always been making stuff. Um, I started drawing at a really young age and then my mom taught me to sew when I was about 10. And I've always just loved uh, finding my voice through illustration or making clothes. I made a lot of my own clothes in middle school and high school or manipulated vintage garments. So that led me to going to fashion school um, in 2011. But I, or sorry, 2001, I wish I was that young. 2001, I'm so tired. Um, but yeah, so I've always loved art and fashion. And when I was a kid, I was obsessed with models and photographers and uh, European designers. And that's always been in my blood. It's still something I follow, even though I'm no longer in that world, but always been creative, always collected things, which I think is honestly, I've been thinking a lot back of what I think Yowie started as like very far back. And I think I've just always been a collector as a very early eBay person and collecting t-shirts and paper ephemera and film posters and different things. So I think somehow I was meant to come to open a store where I'm just continuing to collect things and meet artists and makers and work with them. But yeah, I think it's always kind of been in my blood to do something like this. That's, that's really cool. Um, I definitely was on the the eBay train back in the day, I'm like, yo, so that 3X like vintage polo, right? If I can get that, <laughs> that would be amazing. Or even seeing a bit of that now, like um, there's a few local designers, makers that if I want something like really cool, unique, let's say I'm doing a movie screening or something, um, this is really ridiculous. I'll, I'll send you the picture of it afterwards, just so you have the, the video okay. along with it. But um it's a it's a designer here that kind of takes old um, sports memorabilia and kind of like mm -hmm. remixes it with like this sort okay. of more culture, and um he and he does chain stitching that's his thing and he's like work for oh, yes. back in the day you know so that's like yeah, yeah yeah totally and I remember um I wore this jersey I did this movie screening for this uh, movie that was filmed in Baltimore um called uh, Major League Two and I'm wearing mm -hmm. this Orioles jersey that has. A nickname I've given to myself. So I know that's poor course, right? But <laughs> it says Wave Daddy on the back. And I was okay. like, I'm rocking this. I was like, I'm owning it. So I had the opportunity, again, taking this sort of remix thing. This is this dead stock, like out of print jersey, and then having it updated with a current maker style. I okay. like that sort of blending. And I keep mm -hmm. that. I keep that as like my own memorabilia now. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Thank you. So 
Now, this is a slight modification to a question that you might have, but I think it's still the same. I think it's a similar answer. Um, cool. So in terms of doing like like one thing well, um, from your vantage point as a creative director, as a founder, as a driving force, what is that that main trait that you do very well? Um, I think the thing I do very well is having a uh, almost singular vision in, in what I want us to be. And it's hard. I don't, I feel like the word singular is not correct, but almost having like a North star or a driving point, because we do part of our brand is that I like that we just do different things all the time. I don't want us to ever be known for one thing, but at the same time, we want, I want us to have a brand. I'm going to say us a lot. I don't have a very big team. It's just something I say, cause I think of the artists and people I work with as a kind of a, we're all together in this, but um, yeah, I think, I love branching off and doing different projects, but I want us to become a brand that's no, like you see something you're like, wow, that's very Yaoi or th like, that's very us. So I think having a singular focus, being very much true to my vision for the brand, the things I love, um, whether they all land or not, I think is one of the biggest things that um, it's strong as I'm good at. And I think that's very hard to do right now in a sea of, a uh, very crowded market space, um, social media, the pressures of entrepreneurship. I've just tried to stay the course and say, these are the things I want to do. And then organically, you know, every few months or a few years, I'm like, what if we do this? You know, like the hotel, for an example, that wasn't quite in my plans, but now it makes complete sense. Um, and every time I reveal more parts of it, people are like, wow, this is such a yaoi project. And I'm very proud of that, that recognition. That is that's a great answer. Um, that's one of the things in in doing this and really, you know, I just vibe on it because, you know, really being able to see your vision, articulate your vision and stick with your vision, mm -hmm. and let it grow organically is is super important. And, you know, in doing this, like, you know, this podcast bore out of. I got tight that Trump said something about Baltimore and I, <laughs> and I was like, yo, I'm going to disprove that. And, you know, as going through the process, I'm like, oh, Philly was in that same sort of like tirade and other cities that have black and brown people are in that same sort of conversation. And it's wider than this just this one person. So naturally and organically, it felt like, hey, let's go up here. Let's start doing these interviews in person and really be able to connect with people. And to your 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 point, sometimes they may land, sometimes they may not. It may say no thanks. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh. You know, I, I get that, but literally the intent there in riding this wave, wave daddy, riding this wave mm -hmm. is, is important to me. And I think important to you when it comes to Yowie. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. So what's the significance behind the name? Because I, I, I'm i not going to yeah. <laughs> wait on that one. Yeah. Too long. <laughs> no, you're fine. So Yowie is, um, I guess I would say like Australian slang for Bigfoot, the mythological creature. I chose it at the time I had like over a hundred names floating around and sending them to friends and getting feedback. I chose it at the time because it has almost a forced upward inflection. Like most people say, yowie, like they say it as if it's, it's this very exuberant positive word. And I really loved that. Yeah. Um, and I think now looking back, you know, we're going to be seven this summer. I'm like, I love the fact that a yowie, this creature in folklore is always traveling you're never quite sure where it is, can't be pinned down. Is it real? Is it not? And I think that speaks to our brand a lot as well, that we're always doing different projects and doing uh, things that maybe people don't expect us to do. And and now I love the name even more uh, seven years later for that reason. Yowie. I, I got to add that extra yeah. reflection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people oh. come in the store and they read it and they go, Yowie? Like they, they, they never say it flat. It's like, I think my lawyer says it flat. And that's the only person that says it like that way. Everyone else says it in this upbeat, almost with an exclamation point at the end of it, which I love. That's great. Um, so I, I want to I'm, I'm going to go back to this creative director question, but I feel like we're at a sort of natural point to ask about sort of the the launch and getting started. As, as you touched on a moment ago, Yaoi is uh, coming up on uh, <laughs> seven years up, being seven years old or have you. So, you know, describe how it, how you got started and sort of the yeah. decision to leave behind the fashion career and shift into um, you going out on your own. I see Ralph Lauren. So hint, hint there. Uh, yeah. I see American <laughs> Eagle. And so so tell me about that. Yeah. So I, like I said earlier, I'd worked in fashion. I went to school for fashion and ended up working in fashion for over a decade. And 
honestly, it was my dream for a very long time. I thought that that was going to be the thing I did forever. Um, I was very committed to it. I had great teams. I worked with amazing people. I got to travel. I get to design. Um, I mean, honestly, at American Eagle, I get to design clothing for millions of people, which is crazy Like to think back on. But I definitely started to hit a wall where I was like, is this, is this the thing I want to do forever? And is there something else I could try to challenge myself? Like at the time, I was like, I'll give it a year or two and see um, how it goes. So I really just hit a wall, I think both creatively and kind of the path I was on. If you become a creative director um, in fashion design, you're more of a manager presence than like I'm someone that I just like to be in the thick of things. I still do almost everything that I just came back from my shop of shipping out packages. Like I still do everything with my brand. So I, I felt like it was a little too hands off for me possibly. So starting to think of my future is like, could I start this brand, see where it goes and and just try it out. So I started it really small online. We had 12 products was the first collection, pulled together like favors from my high school friend, shot all the photos. I wrote all the copy, a friend of a friend did our branding, like anywhere where I could use my network to get it off the ground. I did and getting artists to work with me without a website or a presence was a big thing at the time. Like just getting the first yes was really hard. And then once I did, I was like, okay, I can do this. And we launched online uh, May, it's either May 8th or May 9th. I think it's May 8th of 2016. And my first customer was one of my coworkers, Jason, and that was very encouraging. And, you know, at the time it was just sending it to family and friends and asking them to spread it around. And then I ended up quitting my job, which was very unlike me. I'm a very type A planner person, but I wanted to take this bet on myself and go freelance for a couple of years. Uh, so I moved back to Philadelphia got a freelance gig at Urban Outfitters while I figured out the brand and just hit the ground doing pop-ups and trying to build our community, uh, many of which are still with us today. I actually was talking to someone yesterday that was like, I was at your first pop-up and I'm like, that is so crazy that like you're still a regular customer. It's really incredible. Um, and did these really intimate, fun pop-ups. I reached out to a lot of people one-on-one -on -one to invite them to come and was very vulnerable about like, I have this cool thing I, I think I'm creating. I'd love for you to be there. Um, and then got our storefront that we're still in now in 2017. We did a big pop-up at Ubic that was really now Atmos um, that was really successful and it encouraged me to get our own store. And we've been there ever since. And like I said, this summer we're opening a hotel. So um, it really is a I tell people all the time, like, just start, start really small because we just started with 12 things. Yeah. And now I have a store, a new storefront that I'm planning that will have, I think, over 200 objects in it by the time we hopefully get everything in there. So you just never know. Wow. I, I love to hear it. <laughs> right, um, so this, this is going to be a weird, like, sort of like next point to this question because I would imagine days aren't typical. It may be like, what's a week look like for you versus a day? Yeah, what yeah. What a typical week look like for you? <laughs> so it depends on what we're doing. So outside of Yaoi, I also do um, consulting work for interiors um, with like local clients, sometimes out of state clients, but mostly local clients. So I definitely have stuff where I have to check in with them. So that can be a matter of emails. Um, I, the, the thing you're going to hear me say a lot is emails. Um, I think people assume I'm like sitting and painting somewhere or something, but I'm mostly communicating through emails and zoom and calls. Um, so there's a ton of email follow-up with my client, uh, work. I would say Mondays are like a day where I check in. We have a weekly with my team. So we go over right now, we're going over like operations, design stuff, budget, all the back end, there's a lot of back end things that I work on um, outside of the creative, if not more than the creative. So lots of emails, team meetings. Um, I have lots of check ins with the artists that we work with. So we might say, hey, can you make us 12 mugs? Now I got to follow up two months later, say, how are the mugs coming along? Can you send me a photo? What's going on? Any any news? So there's a lot of that. Um, I run around a lot. Like I don't have a car. Um, so I'm always on foot or on the bus. And then if I'm running late, I'm in a lift. But so you might see me carrying um, architectural plans, <laughs> packages. I have a wagon for my packages. Um, 
samples. Like I have to go meet with someone this week about like production samples for things. So it's a lot of running around. It's a lot of schlepping, which I, I secretly love. Um, and then really trying to like over time. So I have one teammate right now and through the new space, I hope to bring on two more people. So really trying to like um, train my team on product knowledge, work on any projects with them, like uh, research sourcing. We're constantly, I'm like a sponge for information. So I read uh, news every day about retail, small business, new brands coming out, um, new people that we should keep an eye on. Most of that is actually off of Instagram because I think people assume it's on Instagram. Most of it's online. Yeah. Um, I go to the library a lot. Um, but I would say most weeks I try to create a structure of, I'm going to spend at least three, two to three hours just following up on emails, which doesn't even sound like a lot, but it, it's even more than that. And then I'm going to spend at least two hours trying to look into some of the creative stuff that we have open-ended um, that need to sort through. And right now, because we're under construction, I do site visits. So I just went this morning, for example, I went to the shop, uh, did some packages, walked over to our new space, took some photos of the construction to send to one of our partners, took a measurement of something, got in a lift, and now I'm here. <laughs> so that's like a typical hour for me. Um, and I'm very, like I said, I'm such a planner. I'm really organized. Um, my hotel document has like 25 tabs in it. Um, one of the four documents I have. So it's really a ton of follow-up, I would say. Um, and I think I, I don't want to like, um, discourage people, but I also want to be very honest about like so much of my job is follow-up and, um, being responsible for making sure to keep people on calendar and on track. And it is very creative in many ways, but that really is the bigger piece of it. Thank you. Um, I like I'm I'm hearing things that I'm doing uh behind the scenes as well. Like definitely having this sort of like data background and all, because I still have the day job. And you know, when you were like it's a lot that's behind the scenes. Um yeah. <laughs> you know, definitely this this project, uh, I look at it as a creative pursuit, but it's definitely very collaborative. Mm -hmm. So, you know, every now and again it might be someone's like, Oh, my bad, bro, I didn't get the email. I was like, yeah, but I've put this time in and this hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so no, totally. It, it's kind of one of those things and you, you know, follow up as much as possible, but yep. folks aren't seeing it. They're seeing sort of the what the 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 sort of presentation the yeah. sort of output is it's like oh yeah. you haven't been online or um you haven't put out any episodes or you put out five episodes wow you're so busy i was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> and immediately i go into like what how many hours does that five episodes represent like is it yeah. three hours is it five hours per episode mm -hmm. and you know it's a lot that goes behind the scenes when you're you're building up something you're building up a brand and really expanding and really following yeah. your vision so I, I read that creative directors should have like excellent communication skills, problem solving people skills. And mm -hmm. in, your, in your previous chunk there, it sounds like you have all of them in spades. What would you what would you say of those skills came most naturally to you? And what was the most challenging to develop? And it could be any other one if you know that comes to yeah. mind. I think the biggest challenge for me in the beginning is that my background is exclusively corporate design. Mm -hmm. And in that I'm used to like, we are all on a calendar. We are answering our emails as quickly as possible. We are all up at 8 a.m. like working like, and artists are just not like that. They're, they're much more fluid in their process. Um, they might not write back to me for a month or so. And I'm like, are you okay? I just want to make sure you're, you're okay. You don't even have to finish this project. Tell me you're physically okay. So I think that transition in the beginning was challenging for me. Um, it's a different language. A lot of the stuff I work on, like ceramics are different than apparel design. So those kind of skills, um, some of which... I took classes to learn more about ceramics. I did a residency. I was like, I want to understand their artwork or their um, practice and be able to communicate with them clearly to get what I want. Because that's what I did in fashion. I went to school for fashion and then I was able to explain to someone how to make the garment that I wanted them to make. So um, I think the communication differences was a huge thing for me that was challenging in the very beginning. Um, but I agree. I think all of those things you need and they really do work hand in hand. Um, 
if you can't communicate with someone, how do you expect to get results from them? If you have fires to put out and you just walk away from them, then everything burns down. You have to be able to problem solve and think on your feet. Um, and I think people skills is huge. And I do tell, I meet a lot of students and young people in the shop and I'm like, the reason I'm so comfortable talking to people is because I was a hostess when I was young and I had to talk to people that are mad about their reservations or trying to get a last minute thing or, you know, having these issues. And I have to be the personable first face in the space. Um, so that came from doing that job. And then being comfortable presenting my work came from working in fashion where I had to present my garments every month or so to a room of, you know, 20 to 50 people, depending on the scale of the meeting. So I'm very comfortable public speaking for that reason. But I'm saying that to say, like, I think uh, creative director is a title that a lot of people are excited to have or want right now. It's very sexy, mm -hmm. but I only feel comfortable saying that I am one after doing creative roles for over, I mean, at this point now, 15 years and understanding the process and knowing what's needed to actually develop and um, continue to guide the language of our brand. That was what a creative director is. It's the visual language. It's the spoken language. It's the copy. It's Anything you think of that is Yaoi, that's coming through my filter as the creative director. And then now working with these artists, makers, friends, photographers, et cetera, to execute those ideas. Um, that's what a creative director does in a very, you know, simplified way. But that is what we do. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> that. Um, so I, I want to ask this question, um, and I, th I'll, I'll have to acknowledge that I thought I was being really cool when I put in this SAT prep word. And uh, <laughs> so can, can you share like, you know, how like maybe, you know, entrepreneurship and your creative sensibilities, your approach to like design, your approach to building out your brand, where they sort of intersect, like being a business owner while being a brand developer or have in that sort of role, um, where they intersect and where they sort of like separate or bifurcate? Um, I think where they intersect, I'm like, where does my entrepreneurship and my small, my creativity intersect? I think that you, if you start a small business and I, I, I consider myself a small business owner. I, I don't know. The word entrepreneur for me is, is too heady or something. I see myself as a small business owner, but if you start a small business, you really do have to be prepared to be in it for the long haul because it's so rare that you do something and it just takes off. Like in, in my experience, it's so rare. So I think the entrepreneur, small business um, energy of like, I have to keep going, you know, being your own cheerleader, th like this is the thing I'm going to be doing. You kind of need that to then create things and put them on a public platform. Like you almost need that um, inner confidence and a little bit of delusion, honestly, to be like, this is something I love and I'm crazy about and I'm going to put it in front of people. Um, so that's where I think they go hand in hand is that we've presented, I mean, we've done so many products over the years. There's so many we've done that I'm like, this is so good. I love it. I'm obsessed. And people are like, we don't care. And we sell like two of them, right. honestly. Um, but I'm still just like, that's fine. I still love it. You know, and you have to like be able to take some of that um, unfortunately, like, re like rejection in a way, or like just not getting that, um, validation immediately mm -hmm. to keep and keep going and, and keep doing it over and over and over again until you do have that product that hits and you're just like, oh my God, this is so exciting. This is the one, but there's so many ones that weren't the one, you know? So I think that like, that's probably the biggest place where it comes together, um, and then in the, in the same, in a different note where they don't come together is like, I would love to just go be freely creative for months and not have to think about my bills or my team or, you know, rent, but I can't do that. That's just not realistic. So I try to carve off days in the week or hours in the week where I'm like, I'm not going to look at my phone or my computer. I'm just going to go look at art or I'm going to take a weekend trip to New York, or um, I was in Miami last week, mostly looking at art and just unwinding, like just trying to do that in between all of the back end stuff is really helpful for me, but there's no way for me to abandon it completely. Um, I don't have that luxury to just be freely creative in that way. Um, so I think 
I think those are the those are the first two things that come to mind. I hope that's a good answer to that question. It's a that's a tricky one. It's not a good answer. It's a great answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and thank you. I, I, I like I, you know I see I see a fair amount of like overlap, and it's almost like the this thing where you you relate to the people you're talking to. It means you're talking to them for a reason. And yeah, you know I've tried to get better at doing that and taking that time to be able to unplug and disconnect and you know when you're building something and it's yours it's your baby you're you're Mm -hmm. very hands-on as you alluded to earlier and you know i feel it the same way and you know i talk about it because it's the fact i put out 300 podcasts last year and it's amazing and and when someone's like how how that's like because I'm a, you know, like I'm a little delusional. I'm out of my mind. <laughs> but <laughs> it's literally the thing that that I love doing and I enjoy doing. And but the work part of it, the sort of behind the scenes stuff, is like those are the things that wear on you. At least at least for me. And it's like I just need to go somewhere that has good food and art, and I yeah. don't have any responsibilities really attached. Yeah. To it. And I think. That even, especially being a creative or having a creative sensibility, that you're not going to really turn it off. You're just going to like lower it mm-hmm. a little bit because you can't. Yeah, help. no, like, totally. Yeah. Like, hmm, what's their at? What's their at sign right there? Where are they at? All right, all right. Let me take that note down and hit them up later. You know, <laughs> I appreciate this style of work, or I'm going to write about this, but something is going to peek through, but you're not actively engaged in it 100. I think <laughs> having that sort of detachment from it is important on occasion. Mm -hmm. No, totally. And I think sometimes when I'm the most stuck on my projects, like I I have definitely moments um, where I like, I don't think creativity is this endless. Well, I think you do have to keep working at it sometimes. And I'll just take a break. I'm like, I'm not going to look at this for two days or a week, you know, if I have the time to take a week off from something and then I come back to it um, and it feels new again and I have new ideas to give to it. So I do think sometimes you have to like, just take a step, take a step back or step away. 100%. 100%. So I, I have uh, I have three more real questions. And here's the first one. Um, so I read that you describe yourself as a person who just loves uh, creating things. And you said <laughs> a little bit earlier. So I'm curious, what stimulates your creativity? Like, is there certain music, colors, environment activities that you're like, yeah, this is absolutely an environment to create? Maybe it's being around construction. I don't know. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't have an ideal environment to create, I would say, because it all depends on my mood. There's days that I'm sitting at a coffee shop and I'm getting so much done. There's days that I'm at home and I'm getting so much done. There's days I'm at home I get nothing done. Um, I am looking forward to in our new space. I finally have my own office. I've never had an office in my entire career. So that will be a nice little reprieve for me to get away from the shop if I need to or take a client meeting. But I kind of move around like sometimes I sit at the library and work or just sit there and do research. Um, The library is a big source of information for me or um, inspiration for me. Books are um, I do love music. I mostly listen to really random music and I'm not going to share any of it because it's too random and corny. Um, But yeah, music is a huge one for me. Uh, TV and film is a huge one for me And, and really just art in general. Like I said, I try to make a point. Um, to go back to New York once a month just to see art, just to go to Chelsea Galleries and catch up with friends. And I wish Philly had a bigger um, art scene, like a gallery scene, because that is something I, one of the few things I miss about living in New York is the gallery scene is so robust and like any day of the week, you can go see something cool, um, which is really fun. So yeah, I would say like art, music, the, the normal things. Um, and I take a million pictures. Like I'm always looking at stuff. I'm looking, I'll eat at a restaurant, I'm looking under the plate to see who made the plate. I'm taking photos of everything I see outside. Like I, I am that definitely that person. Nice. What are five tools that, that you're using? Like, you know, three, five, three, three to five tools that you're using like regularly to do sort of the back end stuff. I mean, email is a part of it, obviously, but what are <laughs> the tools that you're using to like, you know, m- on most days? Uh, number one is email. But within that, I would say, and I feel like this project has been my worst email communication of my life, which I'm so embarrassed of, but it's just, I'm juggling so many things right now. It's insane. Um, but being very informational and friendly in emails is really important to me. Like every email I send, I'm like, hope you're having a good week or how's it, how are things like 
being a friendly person over email is one of the things that I think is a very important tool. Um, I use Google slides every single day. I, I mean, Go this is like, if Google hears this, please sponsor me. I love Google suite. So I use Google slides every single day for my presentations. And what I love about it is it's on my phone. So like today when I was on site checking that measurement, I have an image of the sofa that I'm checking the measurement for on my phone. And it's just very easy. Then I use Google Sheets. That's my number two. So that's for budgets and tracking. Um, so every project I have has a budget. I'm not, I mean, when someone writes me a blank check, this is going to be the greatest day of my life. But until then, I have budgets that are very specific by category, by item, uh, delivery infos on there, um, any lead time stuff. So I have budget tracking and then project tracking and hour tracking. I also do in those documents. So Google Sheets, and then you're going to laugh, Google Docs. <laughs> this is number four. <laughs> so I use Google Docs for uh, notes. So every project I work on, and this is like a tool I've been sharing with friends, I have, it's the name of the project, and then I say scratch pad. And any ideas I have on the fly, I drop into that document. It's very hard to search handwritten notes like in real time. So this is one of my best tools I've developed for myself where I'm like, what was that idea I had about the framing? I can put framing into the stock and it'll show me that note that I made three months ago, five months ago, and then it comes back to me. So Google Docs for Scratchpad note-taking. I also still do manual notes, but that's like my my holy grail is my Google Docs scratch pad. And then the last one is Asana, uh, which I also use every day for task management. So every project has its own board. Within that, I break it out by task. Um, and I think that like one of the biggest things I can tell people is do not put these really big um singular, what is it, tasks on your board, you're never going to get them done. So like I'm sourcing furniture always for my project. So I might say, if I write source furniture, that's taking, that's going to take months. Mm -hmm. But if I write source sofas for suites one, two, and three, I can bite that off and just source sofas for a few hours online or in person. So I think just breaking everything out almost to a ridiculous point I do, um, but it actually helps me get stuff done. So Asana is another person who I would love to be an ambassador for. I love Asana. I have stock in Asana. That's how much I love it. <laughs> I I use all of those, including maybe Calendly, Zoom, and Riverside regularly. But yeah. Google Suite all day. Um, yeah. Let me look on my phone. I'm like, is there anything else I use every day? I, I it's was, funny. Like, I feel like most people would say Instagram, but I don't use Instagram as much as people might assume. And I, for my personal well-being, I use Twitter every day to laugh because Twitter is the fun funniest place on the internet still to this day. So I look at Twitter every day. That's great. Yeah. Um, so here's, here's the last real question. And it's probably the most abstract of them all. Mm -hmm. Why do you do what you do? Oh my God. Um, Very abstract. I know. <laughs> I'll give, I'll, I'll say a few things. It really does make me happy. I know that sounds corny, but like I wake up every day with a sense of purpose. I love what I do. I love the people I work with. I love the artists I work with. Um, I love having a space that people like coming to and returning to people come in the shop and just like hang out, like talking to me, talking to my staff. Like I love that I've created what feels like a fun, safe space. Um, and I don't know. It's just like, people. I think it's really people. Like yesterday I was in the shop working and that's other, I still work in my shop all the time as our creative director. Um, so yesterday I was working in my shop and the, this woman, if I could guess the youngest she was, was 84 years old. Cause she told me she had like a 65 year old daughter. So let's say she's 84, 85 years old. Her name's Hazel. She lives across the street from our new building. And she was just telling me how excited she was about the project and asking me about the artists in the space. And she was there for like 40 minutes chatting with me. And I was like, this is so cool. Like this woman is so cool. And she's so excited about what I'm doing. And she's not 22, no offense to Gen Z. She's like an octogenarian and she's gets it. 
And like, I just stand, it was standing there and I texted my fiance after and was like, I just met the coolest 80 year old woman. And like, she loves my shop and like, I do it for people. Like I, I am a people person. I love people. Um, and she, she fell in love with all this stuff and grabbed it for her daughter's birthday. And like, it's just so nice to be a part of people's special moments. Like we are at the end of the day, we are both a space for community and we're a gift shop. So it's nice like to have those things come together um, under one roof. But yeah, I just, I love people and I love art and design and all those things live within my space and live within what I do every day. I couldn't do this without all the artists and makers that work with me and people come in all the time and they're like, do you make all this? And I'm like, hell no. Like, like of course not. Like I work with so many talented people um, and I'm very lucky in that way. So I do it for the people for sure as corny. That sounds so corny, but I'm just going to stick with it. <laughs> corny and honest is the way yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you um of course so that's that's sort of the the conclusion of the real questions and now i want to hit you with these uh i think it's five yeah five rapid fire questions oh, no okay <laughs> don't overthink them uh brevity is key here all right okay uh who's the first person that comes to mind when i say the term fashion icon fashion icon oh. That's so hard. <laughs> I'm blanking. I'm totally blanking. I'm going to, I'm just going to say Andre Leo and Tally because it's the first name that came to mind or my mom. I'd say Andre or my mom for sure. Nice. Yeah. What was the last movie you watched? The last movie I watched was, oh my God. What did we watch on Criterion? It's called The Fall Guy. It's a Japanese movie from the 80s. Nice. Yeah. Are you a left side of the bed or right side of the bed sleeper? Left. <laughs> That's really funny. Random. Yeah. Uh, what is something that without fail makes you laugh? Um, like I said, Twitter earlier. Twitter. I can just log on there and do one scroll down and I, I will find something funny every single time. And this is the last one. Um, if your life... Uh, was turned into a story, whether it's movie, whether it's book, audiobook, play, what have you, what would the title be? Oh my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Sorry. I, just... I have no idea. What would my life story be? I have no idea. I, I'm fully blanking. That could be uh, a title, actually. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, I have no idea. Or I don't know what I'm doing because I'm so often just thrown into things. So I, was, I don't know what I'm doing. The Shadow Maldonado story. <laughs> great. That's great. I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> More word by Rob Lee. I don't know. <laughs> so um, with that, I, I want to thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. It's been a treat. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And um, I want to, in this this final moment, um, open up the floor for you, um, giving you the space to uh, share anything you want, shameless plugs and all of that stuff. And we'll wrap up from there. Um, social media, website, all of that good stuff. The floor is yours. Awesome. Yeah. So currently, um, if you want to see us in person, we're at 716 South 4th Street in Philadelphia. Uh, we're open Thursday through Sunday usually 12 to six. So come catch us online. We're at shopyowie.com. Our Instagram and Pinterest is hello yowie. Um, and like I mentioned at the beginning of this, we are opening a hotel. So it has always been a dream of mine to be a part of a hotel. My When I started Yowie, I hoped that the ace would find me and scoop me up. And now I have a Yowie hotel opening, which is really crazy, honestly, and a lifelong dream. So um, these lovely people that I met through my shop who were clients on previous projects are now my business partners. And we all together bought a building on South street, which is a street I've been going to since I was a kid. And I am so proud of the space that we're creating, um, joining the board of uh, South street Headhouse district to continue to be a bigger stakeholder in the neighborhood. And, um, yeah, without sounding too crazy, it is going to be amazing. <laughs> I just know it's going to be amazing and it's going to be a game changer. And I'm very proud to um, join the hospitality space. There's not many Black people owning hotels in the country, and I'm very proud to be one of them. So I cannot wait to open our doors this summer and hopefully see all of you there. We have a 13 room hotel. My store is doubling in size. And then we have a cafe we're opening um, with one of my favorite local coffee shops, Reanimator called Wim. So 
please come to the Yowie Mix You space, hopefully this June or July. We will see you there. And there you have it, folks. I want to again thank Shannon Maldonado from Yowie for coming on to the podcast. And I'm Rob Lee saying that there is art and culture in and around your neck of the woods. You just got to look for it. Oh,